A lifetime of study has led you to the belief that people should be eating more seafood. Why is that? The brain first evolved in the sea 500 million years ago, okay? It used marine nutrients for its construction and function. It still uses exactly the same nutrients today, that's why. And the marine food chain is still the richest source on the planet for these things. Very simple. And you're saying that the issues, health issues related to the brain are certainly a rising health problem. Well, there's, there's two things. Firstly, that the, um, the studies that have been done, for example, on fish oils have uh, shown very conclusively that they're powerfully protective against sudden death from heart disease. Now, <clears throat> the brain requires uh, good blood vessels, and particularly when it's developing, it requires good blood flow of placentas just processing great lakes of blood. And so the prediction was that we made in 1972 that if the blood vessels were under attack as signaled by heart disease, then brain would be next. And this is precisely what is happening. And what's the scale of the problem we see now in Europe? Well, the scale is that, that the um, cost of brain disorders at 2004 prices is 386 billion euros for the 25 member states. Now, heart disease, which used to be the number one cost and the burden of ill health, is at 17 percent. But brain disorders have risen, shot up to take over at 25 percent. That's a quarter of the whole budget. And if brain disorders rise uh, as heart disease uh, did last century, well, we're in for serious trouble unless we take action. And what can be done about it in practical terms? Well, in practical terms, it means eating a lot of seafood. I mean, that, that's a simple answer. Um, but I think it's, there's more to it than that, because the uh, availability of seafood people claim, at any rate, is, is on a sort of a diminishing slope. And I think we've really got to take seriously the idea of agriculturalizing the oceans. Um, at the moment, people, the, the way uh, the fishing industry goes about the oceans, is, is, has a sort of a, a 100,000 year old um, ancestry. It's, it dates back to the days of hunting and gathering 100,000 year, 100, years ago. Um, so, it, 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 I mean, we've got to get our act together. Come on, this is the 21st century. Uh, 10,000 years ago, you know, when people started worrying about food supplies, they agriculturalized the land and domesticated plants and animals. It's about time we did something similar with the oceans. And how can you imagine that would come about? Well, it, it, I mean, people are involved in aquaculture, but aquaculture is only one aspect of it because it's a kind of, uh, you're using byproducts of, of the marine food chain and sometimes stuff from the land to, to feed the animals on. But there are aspects of aquaculture which are quite natural in the sense of mussel farming, in which you don't actually need to feed the mussels. You just give them a haven and let them grow. The same with oysters. And much the same can be done with lobsters and crayfish or your, what you call bugs or whatever it is. But also there's a whole, whole um, scenario out there. If you read Jules Verne about the way in which the... Uh, if you look at the ocean just flying into this place, you see under there sort of dark patches where there's things growing. That's where all the fish are because they're eating. You've just got to encourage the development of that growth so you get really good expansion of the primary products of the ocean and then you start the marine food chain taking off in, in a much more earnest way than it is at the moment. Omega-3, iodine, what are the trace elements in fish? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> well, in, in particular selenium, zinc, copper and manganese. Now these are used in, in various aspects of biology and particularly in the antioxidant defense systems. You can't build that your own there's the, there are two types of antioxidant defense systems, the sort of stuff that most people know about, like vitamin C and lipokine and that sort of stuff. But the body doesn't rely on you just eating antioxidants. It makes its own antioxidant enzymes, and it uses selenium, copper, zinc, and manganese to do that. <coughs> and zinc's also particularly important for the translation of the inf information from uh, the genes to the making of proteins. It's particularly important in that process as well. 
So it, it, it's, it, there's a lot of stuff in there that you get in the seafood that's not just fats that are important. And is the problem that simply we're not eating enough seafood or that we're eating too many competing types of seafood, of too many competing types of food and, uh, for example, omega-3s being not made available to the cells that once may have done? Yeah, well, it's both. I mean, the, traditionally, if you go back uh, a century or so, you'll have found that seafood played a very important part in the diet of, of um, people, certainly in, in Britain. And, you know, when Cook came out here, this place was just swarming in seafood. Uh, it, 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 historically, seafood has... You go back to the origin of the civilizations, the five written languages, you know, they occurred beside water. Uh, the Yangtze, the Tiber, the Nile, the Ganges, and the Euphrates. And uh, ever since then, you know, people have been fishing, making boats, and later on the boats served the purpose of warships and for pillaging and plundering. But the Minoan civilization, the Greek civilization, uh, the rise of Rome and all that stuff, in all of that era, seafood was a particularly important and, and delightful delicacy for them.